All right, good uh, afternoon. Uh, thank you very much to Miss Reina, uh, second grade teacher, not just for today, but for what you do every day during this very interesting time. I'm really happy to be back in the classroom. Uh, joining you, you're going to hear from a number of educational leaders across our county. We're here today to announce uh, a grant from our CARES Act funds. We have the CARES Act funds uh, thanks to the excellent work of Senator Carper, Senator Coons, and Representative Blunt Rochester, uh, who managed to not just have an allocation that went to states across the country, but also to certain localities, and Newcastle County is one of those localities. I am Matt Meyer, the county executive, and in my role as county executive, <coughs> we're looking across our community to find the most urgent needs, the most emergency needs, to make sure uh, that those needs get addressed with the funds provided by the federal government. About three months ago, we constituted a number of citizen committees which looked at uh, how the, these resources should be expended, how they should be expended to uh, eradicate the virus from our community through testing, PPE, uh, and other innovative uh, solutions, contract tracing, how we can use these resources to address health inequity, how we can use these resources to address shortfalls with small businesses and nonprofits, and how we can use these resources to protect the most vulnerable. In our Protect the Most Vulnerable Committee, one thing that clearly came out from the citizen leaders was we really, really, really needed top-notch distance learning across our county. My experience, four years teaching elementary and middle school, is that distance learning is a completely different ballgame from getting up in person uh, and teaching, and you really need a whole different set of resources. I know from what I've heard from teachers back in March and April, a lot of those resources are uh, Wi-Fi in the home, devices, software, things of that sort. We're not, we're th this grant opportunity is for those things, but it's not just for those things. There are other things as well. I think as back to my teaching days, teaching in a hybrid class where you have some students in front of you and some students uh, sitting at home online, that's a challenge. And I imagine there's professional development, there are opportunities, there are people out there that know how to do that and do that well. There are students, I'm sure, in Newcastle County who thrive in the classroom and who really have challenges in distance learning. There are also students, I'm sure, who really have challenges in the in-person classroom who do better in distance learning. And so how can we use these resources to maximize the number of students who do excellent work uh, in distance learning who may not uh, uh, be doing so now? So overall, what I like to say is that distance learning in March and April and May, we we're really working uh, across our county, our state, our country to make distance learning adequate. Now is our time to make distance learning excellent because really it's the only choice we have to keep kids and families in our communities safe. This grant opportunity will be available uh, to schools to apply for starting next Monday, August 31st at caresact.nccde.org, at caresact.nccde.org. And we've announced a number of uh, funding opportunities just this week that are competitive, a in, in, competitive innovation grant, a competitive health equity grant. This is not a competitive grant. It's a formula-based grant. So if you're a school, you just multiply the number of students based on the most current count we have times $50, and that's the amount you're eligible for. Based on federal law and federal requirements, it must be used for this distance learning purpose related to COVID-19. We have a number of amazing educational leaders across our uh, state and county here today. And we also have a leader in county council who has 10 years of experience on the Red Clay School Board as a former member of the Red Clay School Board. And I wanted to bring him up first, the representative of the first district. And I think we're in the first district right now. You are. Is that right? Uh, Councilman Kev Woods. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so this is just another way that the county can help. Uh, obviously, uh, with this CARES Act funding, it's important to uh, all the constituents, uh, especially here in the first district. Uh, the distance learning uh, is something that, you know, in Red Clay, we've done some things in, in the past with this, but this is going to be very important in these trying times. Um, so all I can say is to all the leaders that, you know, if there's anything that else that we in the county can do, please uh, come to us, and uh, hopefully this is a good start. Thank you. Superintendent of Red Clay Schools, Dr. Uh, thank you to County Executive uh, Matt Meyer, um, 
County Council, Councilman Wood, again, who serves the first district. Um, I'm the superintendent of Red Clay Consolidated School District. And so we welcome the opportunity for the distance learning uh, grants that the county is providing to, to schools throughout Newcastle County. Uh, they've been instrumental in being a thought partner um, as we address the many needs throughout our community. Um, but again, this opportunity, knowing that we have to start our school year remotely. Uh, in Red Clay, we've been fortunate enough to be able to provide each of our children uh, getting a grades kindergarten through 12th grade with a one-to-one -one device. Um, so each student and family, regardless of the number of children in the household, each child will receive a computer. Um, many of our students in schools have already started that deployment effort. Um, and this grant and these grant opportunities will help us further our efforts to meet the needs of our diverse community. Uh, whether that would be grandparents who are raising children within the household who may need that support, educators, as county executive indicated, that may need professional development um, as we transition from in-person to um, remote. And we know in the spring we had some challenges, um, but we are fortunate enough to be able to learn from those opportunities and those experiences to provide a much better platform until we phase in uh, reopening of schools. Uh, we've also formed some partnerships with some local, local businesses, Nerd It Now, which is a Newcastle County business, to look at Red Clay Let's Connect that provides round-the-clock supports and services, whether that would be for Wi-Fi, broadband access, um, to help with our remote learning experience. So again, thank you to County Council, County Executive Matt Myers, uh, Councilman Wood, who was a former Red Clay School Board member, uh, for this opportunity to expand and enhance our efforts to meet the needs in this remote learning environment for the Red Clay School District. So thank you again, much appreciated. Thanks, sir. Aaron, you want to go? Is, uh, Aaron Bass, Dr. Aaron Bass? Just Aaron Bass. Aaron Bass, the uh, <laughs> Executive Director, Eastside Charter School. CEO of Eastside, Eastside Charter Aaron School. CEO. <laughs> CEO Aaron Bass of Eastside Charter School. I want to say uh, thank you to all of our federal leaders and also to Matt Myers and to the county exec um, for, one, caring about our students. We have seen that during this time of COVID, it has uh, exacerbated the inequity that is in education today. And so in these areas where there's great need, it's also great to have leaders like Matt Myers, as well as our federal leaders, as well as our local leaders that are stepping up to the plate to provide access and provide funding. And so we are so grateful at Eastside. We have given out computers to every student. We're looking forward to increase the access to Wi-Fi and connectivity for children and also make sure that after COVID is done, that we are still using these resources to ensure that our children are prepared for the 21st century so we can forever eradicate inequity in education. Thank you. I'll be very brief. I just want to say thank you, Matt Meyer, for the resources that you are providing to Red Clay, not only to Red Clay, but also other schools in the state. Um, one of the things that um, was, a, was a challenge in March was, um, you know, making sure that um, all students were engaged uh, with remote learning when we switched due to the pandemic. Um, very, very excited with what we have in store for our students this fall. Um, a lot of good PDs that I've been attending, that teachers have been attending that I think are going to allow them to rise to the challenge. Um, and also just since we haven't really had connections, face-to-face -face connections with, um, with our students um, since March 13th when we cl closed our doors, um, just thinking about where they are in terms of social emotional uh, learning and just social emotional in general. So. If we, um, these resources, I'm hoping we'll be able to address those needs that we have and address all the needs that uh, all stakeholders have in Red Clay. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Bancroft School community in the Christina School District, we wanted to thank Newcastle County Executive Mr. Meyer and his incredible team for their continued support of our school community since our buildings closed on March 13th. I also wanted to express extreme gratitude for our building administration team, Principal Greenlee, Principal Reynolds, and our campus leader, Mrs. Greenfield along with our Christina District Office, Building Maintenance Crews, our Child Nutrition Services Team, our Technology Department, 
for their incredible support of our educators, staff, students, and their families as we navigate through this pandemic. Educators, administrators, building maintenance teams, child nutrition services teams, and entire school communities across our state of Delaware have worked tirelessly throughout this entire pandemic, behind the scenes, working through the summer, and also working incredibly hard as we prepare for the new school year. On March 13th, the Bancroft School immediately began our in-house outreach efforts in ensuring our families were able to stay connected to our Bancroft School community, their classroom teachers, their classmates, and the multiple wraparound services we provide in the virtual world. We were able to deploy hundreds of devices to our Bancroft families on the east side of Wilmington, which, including, which included delivering devices to re directly to their homes of many of our families. We have provided and continue to provide direct technology support to our families throughout these summer months. Through our deployment efforts, we immediately identified barriers that impacted our families from reliable internet connections to working with our homeless shelters and ensuring our students could utilize their devices and access the internet, and also included the need for more hotspots in the city of Wilmington. We also identified barriers for our students with disabilities where some of our devices were not best, um, the best ones for them to use. So we also identified um, some additional devices that worked best for our students with disabilities and their families. We immediately reached out to Mr. Meyer and his team in assisting us with removing some of these barriers. When attempting to attain some of the low cost or free internet options available, as well as reliable internet also. Most hotspots were installed and we found that the range of some of the hotspots did not reach our families' homes. Having students take their devices outside and move in range of a hotspot was simply not the answer and some families encountered barriers when attempting to access the low cost internet options available. We knew more work needed to be done, not only to identify these barriers, but how to best solve and break down the barriers. As we continued our outreach and technology support to our families through the summer months, we knew that these barriers still existed. With an enrollment of just over 500 students, the Bancroft School would be eligible for approximately $25,000 through this distant learning grant being announced today. This funding will help support our school community with our continued outreach efforts ensuring all of our families stay connected to our school community as well as continued efforts with moving forward with our school-wide technology plan. The funding will also allow for us to purchase wireless hotspots for families, touchscreen devices for our students with disabilities, support our children's and families first community school team with their continued outreach efforts in the community, and help support us with providing more hands-on educational resources for students to help bring subjects such as science to life in the virtual world. We also provide multiple wraparound services and this funding will help support and continue to support those outreach efforts. We wanted to thank the members of the Distance Learning Committee and County Executive Mr. Meyer and his team for making this funding opportunity available to our schools across Newcastle County. Not one child in our school community, county or state, or the country should have to experience the uneven distribution of access and not be connected to their school families and the world around them. Thank you. Close it out. When I read the welcome back to school to see if we can fill in the blanks, <laughs> I was trying to figure it out. There are some tough ones in there. Uh, but thank you again to Mrs. Reyna, uh, who I realize that her name is right there. Uh, thank you very much to Mrs. Reyna, uh, Mr. Martin, all the, all the faculty and staff here at Richardson Park, as well as all the educators out there. We know that uh, the challenges this fall are probably unlike challenges that have been seen before, and there are a lot of people who are rooting for you. Uh, we know that it's probably a little more stressful. The days are a little more stressful and a little longer than you're used to, but we're here for you uh, to do this and hopefully additional things to support you. All right, applications up on Monday. Is there like a, a maximum or a range that, of what schools can get? So it's, it's based on a formula of $50 per student. So uh, as Ms. Eller said, Bancroft has about 500 students. Over 500. over 500 students. It's based on the most recent um, accurate count 
that we have from the Department of Education. So it's just a formula base they can apply to up to you know 25-ish thousand and other schools, just similar math. Matt, you're a teacher, and what message would you give to all these teachers out there starting a school year? You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable what these, what these teachers have to deal with. Look, on one hand, go ahead. No, I was just going to say if there's one thing that you have to tell me. I mean, on one hand, it's like completely different, right? On the other hand, they're, they're still kids and they still need to learn. I think uh, I always measure myself by sort of the weakest link in the chain. Was I that, that student who was having the hardest time sitting down, the hardest time grasping the math concepts I had? Was I connecting with them? And uh, that, I guess that's my one message to educators. Th there are going to be, I imagine, with distance learning, there are going to be parents who are really on their kids and to make sure that I think in every class you have those students who are just on it. Uh, m m my concern is for them as always, but even more so for that student who um, maybe didn't perform well in the regular classroom and is completely off the charts, maybe isn't even showing up for distance learning. How do we together, how do we as a county, as a community, support you as a teacher to make sure that that student has an opportunity to learn as well? All right, sorry my staff didn't prepare me for that question. <laughs>